QuickBooks Online 2024. Manage users. Get ready and clear your mind because we don't overanalyze. We intuit with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation. Remembering the primary goals as an accountant or bookkeeper include number one, creation of the financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, and related reports. Number two, recording, facilitating, and communicating transactions with those we do business with, which includes customers, vendors, and employees. When we think about the normal cycle in that process, we're usually going to the forms, which are located in the new or plus button. This being broken out by cycle, customer cycle or revenue cycle, vendor cycle or expense or purchases cycle, employee cycle or payroll cycle. When we enter these data input forms, that will help us to create the financial transactions, which create the financial statements when we want to communicate with the customer. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our CPA six pack shirts, a must have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six-pack isn't spelled right. But three letters is more efficient than four, so I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Customers, vendors, and employees, we can do those in the centers on the left, the sales, revenue, or customer center the expenses vendor center or purchases center, the employee center or payroll center. When we set up a new company file, however, we have to lay it down the foundation. That's what we're doing now. Most of that is located in the COG dropdown where we have the lists, which include the general ledger as well as the item list and under the company area where we have the account and settings, which we looked at last time and are now looking at the users. So let's go into the users here. This is our point of focus. The users and the capacity to have multiple people using QuickBooks Online is one of the major factors that may affect the type or, or, or level or tier of QuickBooks Online we want to be purchasing. So let's look at that real quickly over here. I'm on the QuickBooks Online uh, homepage here where we have the comparison between the, the simple start, the essentials, the plus, and the advanced. So remember, when you're thinking about QuickBooks, there's two major categories, desktop versus online. We're here in the online category. And then within the online category, we've got these tiers or levels, which isn't really any difference in terms of what the software is. They're just different levels of access in terms of your benefits within it. So you're not switching from one software to another for the most part. You're just using QuickBooks Online. You just have access to more features within that system. As you go from uh, the simple start up to the advanced, it's a pretty easy process to then level up if you want to. It's going to be a more difficult process if you start, say, at the advanced and try to level down due to the fact that QuickBooks has an incentive not to try to <laughs> have you level down where they do have an incentive to level you up number one and number two you might be using some of these things uh and and therefore when you level it down 
it's going to be difficult to stop using them if you already had access to them, even if they're not essential to your accounting process. Okay, so one of those things are the users. So if you had a simple start, generally you can see down here the the uh, bold items are the ones that are differentials between the two. So this one, if we go to essentials, you can see that it includes three users where we don't have that over here. So that's one of the major differences. Also, we have these other differences that could be impacting one or the other. Connect three sales channels. That would only be necessary possibly if you have like a Shopify store or you're an Amazon seller or something like that. Multiple currencies. That would be if you have more complex transactions uh, where, you're, where you're receiving money or paying money in different currencies. So, And then we have the bill management where you're gonna be tracking your bills mainly on, that'd be like tracking accounts payable and then time entry, which might be necessary for a job cost type of system. Uh, but this one is another big one, the users. Now, when you think about the users, we have this says, invite your accountant to access your books, control user access levels, and share reports without sharing a login. In other words, if you have multiple people working on QuickBooks, it would be nice if they could all log in at the same time with their, their, their logins so that you don't have to provide the same logins to log to everyone in. Uh, and to, uh, two, it would be nice if you can have some control over the amount of things that each individual can see. In more advanced accounting systems, you would like to limit the control depending on what people do in uh, your business. So then if we go from here, and also note that the accountant when we have an accountant at the end of the year for the United States, at least for tax preparation, we would like to be able to invite the accountant into our system instead of generating reports. It used to be that we have to generate the reports, balance sheet, income statement, related reports, and then ask or, or answer any further questions from our, our accountant that's doing our taxes or financial preparation as they come up. It's a lot easier if we can actually give the accountant some access to the software and they can then answer their own questions. And I believe the access of the accountant is something different than the number of users. So you have three users and then access for the accountant. If we go up to the plus, which is where we are at, then we have up to five users. So now we have the accountant and five users capacity. And we also have these other things, uh, connect all sales channels, things like Shopify stores, Amazon, and so on. Uh, inventory, that's the other big one that's the advanced here. That we, That's why we're using this one in our practice problem and because it's kind of the default or recommended. Project profitability, which is often used in a job cost kind of sy system. And the financial planning, create budgets with real-time data. You can collaborate with your team. And then if you move up to the advanced then you have the includes 25 users so invite your accountant to access your books control user access levels and share reports without sharing a login and then you also have the auto tracking for fixed assets which is a new thing there data sync with excel uh, which is something that could be useful as well if you have a lot of data that you're dealing with employee submit expenses and quickbooks batch invoices and expenses custom access and control. So here's the one that kind of goes with the users. Now, if you get more advanced in accounting and you have a larger company, you want to, to limit the, use, the access to certain users and you have more control over that in the advanced. So easily control who sees your data, assign work to specific users and create custom permissions. Then you got the workflow automation, data restoration, 24 seven support and so on. So that's the idea. If we go over here, we are once again in the cog under the company, your company and the users. So we have the, the primary uh, user here and then we have the accountant on the right hand side. So if you don't have an accountant that we can add the accountant, notice they're separate because basically we think about these as two different things. The users being the bookkeepers in essence, the accountant then the person you're giving access for support and possibly for a uh, year in tax preparation and financial uh, reporting to financial uh, to finalize your financial statements for external use possibly. So an accountant can be your best uh, business partner, make it easy to work together, invite yours to your QuickBooks. 
So instead of at the end of the year, printing out your balance sheet, your income statement, and so on, and then providing that to the accountant and having them come back to you for further reports, if they need further reports to do the taxes or whatever, it's easier to invite the accountant and allow them the access they need to get the reports uh, they need to, to do whatever they need to do. Now, if you don't have an accountant, you can find a pro. It has the, the finding a pro here. You have the location. You've got the service provided, uh, industry service. And here you've, you've got uh, select industry and so on. Just And so that's great. But note that when you're looking at QuickBooks for support, they're likely to be focusing in on someone who is a QuickBooks expert. And when you're thinking about the support in the United States, you might also want a tax expert or someone that's going to help you with audits or reviews or bank loans or something like that. So those are kind of two different things. When you're thinking, do I need, do I need someone to help me with my bookkeeping? If you do, that's great. Then you might use the QuickBooks tool because you're using QuickBooks and you get some kind of support there or some type of assurance that they have uh, met some minimum standards in order to be on the list. But you also want to keep them in communication with your tax preparation because that's often one of the primary goals of small businesses to make sure that you're in compliance with taxes and possibly you might need like a CPA firm or something like that, an accountant to help you to, to f compile your financial statements, if not review or audit them so that possibly you can get loans or something like that if the bank is requesting that type of thing. So keep those two things kind of separate in your mind. If you already have a CPA or an accountant, make sure if you hire a bookkeeper, you keep the accountant in the loop because the end goal is possibly tax preparation and financial statement reporting for year end purposes. And, uh, and, and if you don't have a tax preparer and you're thinking about hiring someone, you might want to think about someone that can cover both of those bases if it was possible. All right, let's go back on over. I'm going to go back on into the company and manage uh, the users. So that's the accountant. And then on the user side of things, we have the ability to add the user. So if I add a user, let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to add a new user, personal information. You'll send them an invite to join your company with uh, their, their Intuit account. So let's say we have the user here. I'm going to say it's going to be... I'm just going to say that we have Jane Clark here that we're going to add. And then we have the, the control permissions for your new user by assigning a system rule. So you have uh, you can take a look at this for more information. If I select the drop down, we've got uh, the company admin. You probably only want one company admin, which is obviously going to give you the most control. You've got uh, the standard access level. We've got the standard all access without payroll. If you have payroll within the system, payroll is going to obviously give a lot of personal information to the employees. So then we have the standard limit customers and vendors. We got the standard limited customers only, standard limited vendors only, and uh, standard with uh, standard no access. So let's go through a few of these. When we click on any of these items, it'll give us a summary up top, and then it'll give us basically the cycles and the access within those cycles. So the sales cycle or revenue or accounts receivable cycle, the expense cycle, the inventory, if you're dealing with inventory, lists, chart of accounts, for example, and the item list, bookkeeping, uh, accounting, payroll becomes important if you're processing the payroll within it, reports, uh, then time tracking, commerce uh, go payment app and uh, access and account management so let's take a look at some of these here we go to the full admin if i go to the company admin then the description says users added to this role can see and do everything because they are the admin so this includes sending money changing passwords and adding users not everyone should be an admin so even if you hire a full service bookkeeper, you probably don't want to put them in as admin. You might want to have, have you be the admin and then the full pur purpose bookkeeper. If you want to give them as much control, uh, then you might send them uh, standard all access. But you can see here, if you put them as admin, then under the sales cycle, here's all the items within it. We'll go into them in a little bit more detail, but they're going to have full access, of course, to all of these areas. If they are the admin, that's the point of the admin. So you probably only want one person as the admin. Next level down, standard all access. 
So users added to this role get full access without admin privileges, plus access to payroll. Payroll being one of those key items. Do you want to give them access to payroll or not? Because payroll does have sensitive information within it. So if we look at the sales cycle, just to get a quick look at these items, we have the view, create, edit, and delete of all the forms under the payroll cycle. Invoices, if you're on an accrual system. Estimates, the thing before you create the invoice. Sales receipts, the cash-based uh, form for sales typically. The receive payments, after you create the invoice, you receive the payment. Credit memo, someone returns something. Refund receipt. Then the delayed credit and delayed charges. We talked about those forms in a little bit more detail uh, in another section. We have the expense area. We can view, create, edit, delete, and then if appropriate, we have the approve and pay tabs here as well because we might have an approval process for the accounts payable to be paying something out. So we have the bills. We have the access to that, the payments, the bill payments, the vendor credit, the credit card uh, credit, expenses, checks, full access to print checks, and then purchase orders, expense claims. Notice again, these columns over here, even though there's not any check marks, you would think that this is the full access here because this is the full access uh, category. So these areas aren't applicable would be the general idea or assumption. Inventory, view, create, edit, delete. Remember that inventory, if you're on a perpetual inventory system, would be something that you're tracking both in unit and dollar amount as you're entering it. Although even if you have inventory, you might not use a perpetual inventory system if you're tracking inventory outside, in which case you would have a periodic inventory system. So lists. So you have the view, create, edit, and delete lists, including employees, vendor, customers, and uh, the currencies. And then we have the bookkeeping, where you have view, edit, uh, create, edit, and delete bank deposits, uh, transfer, bank transactions, rules, tags, receipts. And then we have the, the accountant. So we have view, create, edit, and delete the chart of accounts. That's going to be an important one, which is the foundational thing that we usually first set up. The register, full access, register being a way that you can you can get into the activity of a particular account. Uh, reconciliation, primarily bank reconciliation and credit card reconciliation, internal control reports, journal entries, which are often used for period end, more, I guess, uh, complex in some ways, or, or kind of a different part of the accounting system than what's typically done with just the forms normally, which is way, the way we want to do normal data input. Payroll, so view and edit the payroll. Uh, reports, so you have full access to the sales, expense, payroll, management, custom reports, time. So for entering uh, time tracking into the system, possibly to help with payroll, but possibly also to then create invoices. Then we have access to that additional uh, permissions. We have uh, company information, access the subscription. So that, there's where we don't have it there. You have the option to basically check these off. Uh, manage users. So that's unchecked off right now there and you have the option to manage the user possibly there as well. All right, let's go to the next one. Next we have next standard all access without payroll. So now you have full access, full access, full access, full access, full access, full access, uh, but but without the payroll. So where's the payroll? No access to payroll. So if you want to give them everything, but you don't want them to actually see the payroll and you keep that on your side, that would be the one. So we have the standard limit customers and vendors. So now we have standard limited to customers and vendors. Customers being the sales side of things, vendors being the, the, uh, the payable side of things or the expense side of things. So full sales, full expenses, uh, inventory, full access, lists, full access, reports, full access, time tracking, full access, uh, account management, partial access uh, here, and bookkeeping, no access to the bank deposits, transfer, transfer, uh, bank transactions, rules, tags, receipts. So you have a little bit more kind of double check. That might be a safe way to go or a little bit safer way to go for a bookkeeper so that you keep control over some of these items that are managing more over the actual cash going going in and out and whatnot and and give them access to the other forms 
And then the accounting, you've got uh, the chart of accounts. So, so you're the one that has access over adjusting the chart of accounts, which can be kind of uh, uh, tedious uh, if you're ha hiring a bookkeeper and whatnot, but it might give you some more internal control. And then payroll, uh, payroll here, no access to the payroll. All right, let's do the next one. Next one, we've got, you've got standard limited, standard limited customer only. So now we're, we're, we are restricting only to the customer side, which, uh, which is on the sales side. So now they have full access for the sales side of things, inventory, full access, lists, full access, reports, full access, time tracking, full access. But you can see on the no access, we don't have the expenses, no access to the bookkeeping, no access to the accounting and the payroll. So, so now we're getting into more kind of internal control systems where we're saying, I'm only going to give them access to the sales side of things. And then we can do the opposite, only giving access to the vendor side of things. If we have two people working as bookkeepers, this might be one way that you could partially separate the internal control. So now they have access to the, to the uh, expenses, the inventory lists, reports, additional permissions, uh, time tracking, no partial access to management uh, reports, and then no access to the revenue side of things, sales, bookkeeping, accounting, and payroll. And then if we go down to the, the standard, uh, standard no access, so now we have no access to time tracking, partial access uh, to, to the account management information for the view of the company information, no access to the sales, expense, inventory lists, bookkeeping, accounts, payroll, and uh, the reports. Okay, so let's try to, let's go back up to the second level. Uh, imagining we're picking up a bookkeeper, we don't want to make them act admin but we'll go to the second tier down. And then of course we can send the invitation. So it's gonna be sent then to the email. Uh, and I'm not gonna share my thoughts here. So it's been sent to the email. And now if I go back to the first tab, you can see that we have the two people here. Jane Clark has now been invited. So we can resend the invite. Jane Clark, once they receive the invite, hopefully by email, will then have a link. They can open, she can open up the bookkeeper, whoever you're sending it to can then open it up and verify it and then have access to the login on their side. If we hit the drop down, we could of course delete it here as well. Once they have accepted, then we should be able to edit it. So once the, the, the invite has been accepted, you'll see the edit field. And if we want to adjust the settings within it, then we can go back in there and adjust the settings. So note that they have kind of updated those options to separate the internal controls versus uh, what they had before to give limited options to people. But just remember that if you get into a larger business, then you're probably going to want to separate the duties even further. And that's when you get into some of this advanced area. One of the one of the main things on the advanced is one that you have the more users, if you have more people that are using the software, but also you have more custom access to control. And in order to manage who sees what that's one of the major internal controls over larger accounting systems, we specialize to people doing specific things. And we have more uh, kind of red tape where someone has to have approval processes in place and we limit the views of of people to see only what it is that they're they're specifically focused in on that's just part of the pain it's a pain to do that right but that's just part of the process of of growing to a larger business where you have to spend more time on those internal controls and that's one of the reasons where you might need to level up on uh, a subscription